I've been buying books for quite a while now and to be honest it's starting to become a problem. Hello everyone, it's Rebecca here and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, hiya, how are you doing? Today's video is a book haul because, you know, that's my brand, that is literally all I ever do on this channel. So these books have been gathering since, I want to say the back end of June. Like literally within the past two weeks, like when this goes, I don't know when this is going up, I think this is going up back into July, but it's ridiculous how many books I keep buying and I just can't help it because I feel like in these current times, supporting the economy by buying books is the way to go. Don't think anybody else also feels like that, but that's just me. Yes, yeah, so without further ado, I have a crap ton of books to show you, so I'm just going to get on with it. This first one is one that I'm so, so, so excited about. I've had it on my wish list for so long, and then I just bit the bullet because I've been feeling a bit down and bore myself it anyway. And that is Sky Without Stars by uh, Jessica Brody and Joanne Rendell. This one is Limes in Space, and so excited. I've been looking for this for so long. They've only had the hardcover in the UK, and then... It's been released in paperback, so I was like, you know what? I need to order some stuff for my dad's birthday anyway. Why not treat myself? So true to myself, I did. So this follows three characters, a thief, an officer, and a guardian who have one shared destiny and they're all strangers. This follows Shateen, Marcellus, and Alouette. Uh, and power, romance, and destiny collide in the sweeping reimagining of Limis. I literally looked at the characters' names and the last line, and that's it. I don't need to know anymore. Next up, we have a book. I'm not sure if I've already hauled this. I might have done. Um, but next up, we have a book that was sent to me by the publisher, and that is the name of all things, which is the second book in the Ruin of Li the Ruin of Lions. No, the Ruin of Kings. This is the second book in a chorus of dragons. I can't get my words out and I'm only on book two. This is great. So this is the sequel to A Rune of Kings by Jen Lyons. I have started that one. I still haven't finished it. It's taken me a while, but I am loving it as I'm reading it. A lot of stuff just happened when I put the book down last and I can't quite cope. <laughs> like, I feel like a lot happened in such a small space of time and I was like, what the hell is going on? What have I just missed? And then I seen Stephen from the art company mess like putting a word out on Instagram about this and I was like I need this and this is just beautiful absolutely beautiful so Rune of Kings is a fantasy which follows Kieran who is a, a lost prince but he doesn't actually know that and we're following him as he learns that and starts to come to terms with what he actually is entitled to and how he fits in society and so far we're we still haven't got to that point yet but the build-up is just it's really really entertaining i would highly recommend we follow two viewpoints of kieran's one when he is geished and one where he is um building up to that point and geished basically means that your owner has a bit of your soul you can't do anything wrong you can't go against their orders or you die basically while they have your soul. Yes, I am really, really enjoying it. I would highly recommend to anyone who's looking for a fantasy to get stuck into. And this boy is chunky. Next up, we have a one that everybody has been talking about. And I was like, I need that. And that is The Library of the Unwritten by AJ Hackworth. This one, I just, like I said, I've been loving everybody's sort of like raving about this on on the book community online just in different you know different little circles but i do believe that the american edition is prettier that the us edition is prettier than this one that's what caught my eye and i picked this up and i was like this isn't as pretty as the us edition and i'm kind of bummed about that so this follows a world where books that are unfinished by their authors get left in the library of the unwritten which is sort of guard guarded by like a, a bookkeeper like a library woman what is that word that word has gone. But anyway, librarian. That wasn't even a difficult word to remember, Rebecca, come on. But anyway, one of the uh, characters escapes from one of these books and it is Claire's job, I believe, is it Claire? Yes, it is Claire's job to track down the characters and return them to their rightful books. Naturally, things are gonna go wrong and I'm excited for that. This next one, you may have spotted the buy one get one half price sticker on the library of the written and this was the other one that I got with it and that is The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. This is Game of Thrones meets Gladiator. Blood, sweat, tears, drama, sign me up. This, I believe, originally started as a Wattpad story, I think. Am I right? Am I wrong? It's either Wattpad or self-published. I think it's self-published, actually, come to think of it. But this started out as a, 
a very minimal um, underfunded work and then a publisher got a hold of it and it's taken the world by storm and apparently rightfully so. I'm very very excited to get to this one just off the concept of Game of Thrones meets Gladiator alone. So the next two I have are middle grade. The first one being The Explorers by Catherine Rundell. This one I was toying with the idea of picking up and again it was one of those I'm feeling down I need to cheer myself up purchases which if you saw my Twitter feed, you will know I also bought a Mickey Mouse mug with my initial on it because I'm a child. So the Explorer follows four children who are stranded in the Amazon jungle when their plane crashes and they believe they're the only ones there and have only, only ever been the only ones there but what if someone or something was there before? I'm excited to be honest. I can't help but think that... <sighs> as harrowing as it was and disgusting in some elements, Lord of the Flies kind of situation. I'm kind of worried but in a middle grade format that that's what this is going to take and I really hope it doesn't but I'm very excited. It's been also um, quoted by Jacqueline Wilson on the front so again excited. This next one is another one that everybody has been raving about if you follow um, certain middle grade booktubers and that is Wonderscape by Jennifer Bell. This one, right okay hear me out, this is like Jumanji I am so excited. Like, I loved Jumanji, the original. I actually really enjoyed the remakes as well, I'm not gonna lie. I really enjoyed them. Not the second one as much, but the first one was really good. So this follows three children who, when a mysterious explosion happens, end up stranded in the year 2473. They find themselves in the world of Wonderscape and they have to basically play a game to get out. I'm there for that. Like I said, Jumanji. I feel like if I say that too many times, things are going to come and get me out of my books and I'm, I'm scared. So now we are on to some young adult and adult fiction. The first one being The Deep by Alma Katsu. This one is a retelling of the Titanic. I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> so everybody knows what happened with the Titanic was a big iceberg. It crashed into the iceberg. The iceberg split the boat and put two and the boat sank. Basically, that's the gist of the, the whole thing. Like, that's not a spoiler. That is history. I mean... If you want spoilers, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio draws Kate Winslet naked, that's a spoiler. <laughs> is it a spoiler? That's not really a spoiler. This is the Titanic retelling, but what if the iceberg didn't make the boat sink? What if it is sirens and mermaids and just a spooky retelling of an already eerie event? I am down for that. I mean, I say that now, but give me when I actually get round to this, I'll probably be absolutely cacking myself. So this next one is the most recent Illumicrate, as in June's Illumicrate, and it is now in the middle of July, so if you don't know what it is, sorry. Um, but I've left this one in the plastic wrap for now, and that is The Court of Miracles by Kester Grant. And this is another Les Mis retelling, as far as I'm aware. I think it is a very loose Les Mis retelling. I believe it is. I may be completely wrong, I'm probably completely wrong, but that is what I'm remembering. But this special edition um, is like a rose gold kind of effect with the black and it's got the spread edges. It's very, very pretty. I don't want to take it out here yet because it's just really, 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 really pretty. But this follows nine guilds. So this follows a city that forms nine guilds to protect themselves from whatever the land deems necessary to be protected from. And the lords of each guild form the Miracle Court bound by brethren laws that they had written. I do believe that this is a Les Mis retelling. I'm not sure. I don't know a lot about this one, as you can tell, but I'm very excited. This next one is another Illumicrate book, and that is The Midnight Lie by Marie Rutkowski. This one is beautiful sprayed edges. It's like, it's red, but not red, but it's also red. And it's got the letter inside, and it's signed. Most of the Illumicrate books now are signed as well, but I just love the pink. I just love the pink not gonna lie. So this one has actually been getting mixed reviews but when it comes to Illumicrate I tend to find that the majority of the Illumicrates that I read I really really enjoy. It's very rare that I don't enjoy them unless it's Havenfall but that's a different story altogether. Snake on the cover because it's on brand for uh, the current book community uh, covers and stuff. So this one follows Nirim in a society where you have the highers and the lowers basically and the lowers aren't allowed to sample sweets or wear colours and that is where Niram is from. However she then meets a boy I'm presuming, I'm, I'm probably very wrong but she meets somebody who tempts her away from that life and she then must give all of that up for the sake of secrets and magic and that sounds interesting. It looks like a fairly short read. It is actually like 350 pages so it could be quite interesting. I Like I said heard mixed things so I'm holding out hopes for this being a five star. Next up we have one that was highly highly um, 
loved and did the rounds last year on booktube and that is the immortalist by chloe benjamin this is a one that is set in 1969 and follows a woman who can tell you the date you're going to die so she tells four children the date they're going to die and we watch how that impacts their lives and the decisions they make going forward i am really interested in this one because a lot of the booktubers that i follow have like not religiously follow but like the booktubers a lot of the booktubers that i follow a lot they have read this and really really enjoyed it and some of them actually favored it on their featured featured it on their favorite videos and i am very very excited these next two were very kindly gifted to me by vanessa over at wonderness who features in all of my videos pretty much as i do her because i have access to her wish list <laughs> but anyway um <laughs> these two came as a surprise i wasn't expecting anything at all so i'm a bit of a downer um as in I'd had some bad news about work and stuff and I was very very stressed and I got these in the post and my other half was like stop buying books online you've literally got books upstairs stop it and I'm like this one actually wasn't me and she bought me A Throne of Swans by Catherine and Elizabeth Cor and Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. This one I'm actually really excited about really really looking forward to and it follows Maya who works as a seamstress in the shop with her father and dreams of becoming the greatest tailor in the land but as a girl the best she can hope for is to marry well and i believe that she dresses like a man to get into the court and then is like tada look at my embroidery skills i fooled you all i'm actually a girl i believe i mean that's what i imagine in my head i think that's how it works probably very much more um in depth than that but this one came with just a little something to cheer you up on the message inside and i genuinely did cry so thank you very much vanessa for that one so throne of swans by Catherine and elizabeth core this one again it was a one that i'd heard good things about and then it just died down completely as soon as i added it to my wish list everybody stopped talking about it and i was like why do you do this why just why but this one follows adrin adrin who um inherits the role of protector of a traitor's a dominion in a kingdom where nobles can transform into birds when her father died. Her ancestral bird is a swan, but she's not been able to transform from years, not since witnessing the death of her mother. And I believe that there's going to be some sort of conflict over whether she should rightfully have the throne if she can't transform. I'm not sure, but I imagine that she is going to transform into a beautiful swan and it'll all be beautiful and lovely and probably very sad at the same time because she's technically an orphan and you know ruler of her kingdom next up is another author <laughs> that i keep buying books up but not read yet and that is the death of mrs westerway by ruth ware i bought myself and my mother-in-law this because she really enjoyed sheree lapina's work so i think she'll probably like this one too but this follows a young girl who finds out through post that her grandmother or a great grandmother or a, an elderly relative has died and basically left her estate and monies to her she is like all right okay no bother yeah cool so she goes to live this life of luxury but she's not actually the right person it's a case of mistaken identity and i'm very intrigued about why this hasn't been highlighted like alerted sooner to everyone about why it's mistaken identity like surely somebody would know that it's mistaken identity but yes very excited what did i buy myself this time is something that i always say when i get parcels okay so next up we have the boneless mercies by april genevieve to Chalk, Chalk. I'm not sure how to say that name. I'm very, very sorry. This one is a one that I've been looking at for a while, and it was. I think it was around at the same time as the fandom, but I think I could be wrong. But I was very much like, oh, these two books go together, and I just never picked this one up. And again, almost hit myself in the face, but I found this one in the works for two pounds. I really like when I find little gems in the works, and if you're in the UK and you haven't read the Lunar Chronicles. The works have the Lunar Chronicles in. Just make sure you pick up Cinder first because that's the first one. They have them in on the three for five pound deal. Just do it. You can get the first three for a fiver. I would highly recommend. But anyway, <laughs> that's not what I'm here to talk about. <laughs> this is the story of mercies and witches, of reeds and thorns, of women and giants. This follows four characters who are bornless mercies. Death trade is hired to kill quickly, quietly and mercifully. That sounds like that's not going to happen. It's a job for women and women only and men will not do this sad dark work. So Freya has no family, no home, no fortune, and yet her blood sings a song of glory. So when she hears of a monster slaughtering men, women, and children in a northern jaldom, she ch decides as this is the Mercy's one chance to change their fate. Glory comes at a price. That's not the turn I was going to expect it to take. I was expecting it to take a very different turn. Unless the turn that I'm thinking of actually is going to happen, but yeah, very excited. We have four left. Four left. I really wish that I could just take this thumbnail and be like, this was all the books I bought, but that's a lie because, you know, 
there's the rest of them. <laughs> but the first one I have here is a one that has been highly, 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 highly recommended by my best friend Vanessa, and that is the Pop Chill by M.W. Craven. I have this one on Kindle. This one has been compared a lot to the Robert Galbraith series, and if you don't want to support that piece of trash, pick up M.W. Craven. That is what I've been recommended to do. So that is what I'm going to do, and when the new Robert Galbraith book comes out, I'm going to wait until somebody donates it, because it'll probably take about two weeks and it'll be donated. But anyway, this one follows Washington Poe, who is a detective, and his uh, assistant or associate, and their relationship, as well as solving crimes on the go as well. If it gives people Robert Galbraith vibes, I'm there for that, because I really, really enjoyed Robert Galbraith. So I'm not even going to look at the back of this one. I just remember Vanessa reading this ages ago and rating it five out of five and I was like I was almost gonna pick that up and then didn't when it was out in the shops originally so I'm so pleased I went and picked this one up anyway. Next up we have a chunker and that is The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Islington. This one I've heard that you shouldn't really read the back of it you should just go into it. I believe it follows a man on a journey <laughs> a big journey because you know it's part of a trilogy so again I don't know when I'm gonna get to this one I just know that I'm going into it blind and like so many of the books I've already mentioned going in blind is probably the best option for me. We then have the last two which I acquired yesterday because we went into our local city centre for the first time in a while and these, this two, this, this two, this first one of the two I was humming and hawing the last time I bought books about buying it but that is Slay by Brittany Morris. This follows a young girl who has created this online gaming platform for people of colour only. Then she kind of like moderates it, she keeps it on the download that she's moderating it kind of like hiding hiding it from everybody that she knows not even her boyfriend knows that it's her that's in charge of this and there is some sort of attack outside of the game as a result of the game this then brings up the concern over whether whether this game is racist in terms of being anti-white or whether it is a platform that only black or people of color could that only black people can be in and that's fine which to be honest that is fine i don't see the issue with that i just think that this is going to be racially motivated, racially harmful, and it's going to be an important read with a sci with like a gaming sci-fi twist. So I do want to read this. I've heard some good things about it, and I'm excited. I feel like that didn't make very much sense because I'm rushing now because I'm already on 25 minutes of footage. So I feel like I'm rushing, but if anybody wants to know more information about Slay, let me know because that was a rubbish um, synopsis. The last one is a sequel to a book that I still haven't read. <laughs> And I know somebody's going to hate me for that, but this sequel is Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi, the sequel to Children of Blood and Bone. I have the Waterstones Children of Blood and Bone edition, which was given to me by Vanessa as a gift, so thank you very much. So I had to get the Waterstones special edition of the sequel with the blue sprayed edges. This one is much, much shorter than Children of Blood and Bone, and that kind of makes me feel like I should pick up Children of Blood and Bone just so I can read a short book afterwards. I saw this on the buy one get one half price and there were so many things that I wanted and I was like I'm just gonna buy Slay, that's all I'm gonna do and then I had the sticker on it and I was like I'm gonna buy something else. So this is what I picked. So there we have it, that is my book haul again. <laughs> if you've seen any of these books on here that you would like to read let me know in the comments down below or if you have read any of them again let me know, I'd love to have a chat and thank you all so so much for watching. If you click that little subscribe button and open the description you'll get links to all of my little social media channels. Go say hi on those platforms, I love to make new friends on the internet, I am not a creep I promise, I'm just very very hyperactive right now <laughs> but anyway thank you all so so much for watching and i shall see you all soon with another video bye